improving your flexibility in the context of hypermobility. The goal is not stretching to improve flexibility. We need to look at it a bit of a different way. So if you're experiencing hypermobility, you're likely experiencing a range of different things where your joints feel out of integrity. They, they don't have that stability. They feel floppy. You may naturally gravitate toward flexibility. What we're going to explore is improving your flexibility in the context of hypermobility. So I thought we'd dive into that so that if you are experiencing hypermobility around your joints, then you can feel flexible, but then also stable and strong to move through your life more freely rather than feeling fragile and at risk of injury all the time. So let's dive into it. We're going to go through four key areas to have a look at. So uh, the first is to focus on stability. I'll hand over to you to start, Marcus. Yeah. And and stability is just a big word. <laughs> <laughs> when we talk to a power lifter, there is some other context to stability. Yeah, we are mainly talking about stability, especially around your joints and around your spine. So you have a general feeling of just keeping your body in a specific alignment and not getting too floppy mm. and just get a sense of a feeling. How does it feel like to have a stable body? It, a simple idea can be just standing beside a wall and then creating tension in terms of pushing against the wall and feeling the body, how it is feel like if the body's just creating this structure where it is not pushed away just mm. as a practical point of view yeah yeah i find a useful visual is you know like particularly around the areas that are naturally prone toward instability because of the nature of the joint like the the hip and the shoulder and ball and socket joints and yeah. like if if we look at that what we're kind of looking at here with stability is in the case of hypermobility you know, there, there may be more space for the, like the shoulder bone to sit in the shoulder capsule and the, the, the femur, the leg uh, to sit in the capsule and to kind of not be able to be stabilized in that joint. So what we're kind of talking about is as you're going into a stretch or a flexibility practice to bring the focus toward what can I do to actually stabilize that joint in space and it reminds me of uh, working with a lady who was a dancer and gymnast especially when she was younger and you know she had like full splits in every direction and back bends and all of that sort of stuff and you you would look at her and go whoa like she has amazing flexibility her body must feel awesome you know, because she's so limber and mobile, but she was in a lot of pain all the time because all those joints were like compressing on one another all the time. So, you know, when I tested her in her active split position, so this was a split without being able to just be supported by the ground, her range, you know, went from here all the way kind of to here. And so, yeah. like, that was our starting point. That was her stable point. As soon as she started to go further than that, everything started to shake and wobble and then, like, she would compensate and all of that sort of stuff. So we want to kind of look for not your maximum end range, but the range that you can stabilize in to start and then building from there. Yeah, so keeping the body in place when you're in a starting position, for example, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's, a, that's a really key principle. And you may find, you know, I do notice that a lot of, it, it's more common in my experience for women to be hypermobile than men, generally speaking. And in that case, you may find that you gravitate toward practices like yoga, you know, particularly like yin yoga and all that sort of stuff. It will, it will feel easier and more natural for your body, but that's not always what your body needs. Often it needs more of a yang approach. So like looking at the way we practice for say different martial arts where we are developing stability in motion. Now this can be a really useful way of looking at it. So instead of like going into like a deep passive 
split position, practicing things like the horse stance where you need to stabilize your body in that end range is really useful. Yeah. So the next area which kind of leads into this is creating tension in end range, which you were touching on before, Marcus. There's some examples that you find really useful when you're working with people. Yeah, it's just in a way the starting point is like we talked before just seeing okay where i'm able to keep my body in place and then just finding the sweet spot and in this in in this end position when we are talking about the splits or horse stance then just pulling the feet together and see if there's a possibility to increase tension in this position to mm -hmm. really bring in more strength and stability in the end range so the nervous system is learning oh this should be an active position where uh, which is usable instead mm -hmm. of just going for an feeling of relaxation it's it's really about creating tension mm. in the yeah. so we are able to use those ranges in our daily life in our sports and not just to do the splits yeah yeah i think i think that's really useful when when we're looking at flexibility because if you do gravitate toward flexibility and you have a goal to that that is associated with feeling better in your body and you're missing that piece of stability then that's where those challenges can happen and in addition to what you were saying was the the feeling will generally be for you it it will be hard you know like it will feel like your like muscles are, are burning and fatiguing and it, it will feel like strength training because it is more of what you need in that case when you are hypermobile, like being aware of how the joints are positioned. If, you know, say, for example, like your elbow extends, you know, I'm not going to say past normal range, but like beyond kind of that common range where then yeah. the joint can, you know, and this is to not create a problem or then shaming of you know your body and how it moves but we're looking at how can we let's say even if we were in that end range how can we create tension so that we can then move rather than just flop Walk. into yeah. that end range yeah when you're a weight lifter you have an advantage if your elbow is hypermobile it's easier to stable the weight <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, and so it's it's kind of like it's looking at, you know, whatever it is that you want to do in your life. And I really do like to focus on we, we each have a body and we, we get to choose, you know, how we develop that body to support us, you know, navigating through life as this wonderful vessel that we have. And so putting it into context of what are the movements that I would like to do in my life, that might be for a sport, that might be for for a hobby, that might be for just day-to-day living and then yeah. as i go into those ranges am i able to create tension in those ranges you know where are my end points where i'm not able to where it's sort of like i i lose body control in those ranges and, and that's that's a useful context to then look at okay then how can we reverse our flexibility practice reverse engineer it in order to support those things first you know so rather than just like it's about an end goal of becoming more flexible it's looking at how can i become more stable be able to create more tension which seems like the opposite to flexibility in yeah. the movements that i want to do in life and then explore further from there yeah that's a great yeah. advice yeah so the third point it's about movement transitions rather than positions and this is this is really important because often we think about flexibility and we we have an idea of these end positions and that equals flexibility but what we're talking about here is is developing an ability to transition between them yeah i, I just have a perfect example I, I work with a pro hockey player and he was really good in doing different stuffs like all the mobility drills and moving his hips <laughs> in all different kind of rotation positions, what my body is not able to. <laughs> but he was in hip pain and hips are not, uh, my hips are free of pain. And the only thing we started to add is movement transitions, like using the 
tiger stance, the gliding tiger. So it's a bit of a wider horse stance or a, a side lunge and keeping the position low, creating this tension and moving from left to right. Mm. And we were building up his capacity up to five, six minutes and then adding some weights because his sport is very intensive. And after two or three weeks, his hip pains were gone. And his feedback was, I feel I feel more stable on the ice when I'm skating and I'm feeling more stable or the stablest in my whole career. And he's playing hockey for nearly 20 years now. Mm. Was just adding this movement transitions into yes. his, for mobile hips. So it can be really like a magic if if this is the case to focus on. Yeah. I think that that brings up a really useful point too around you may not be hypermobile around every joint in your body. Yeah. There, there may be some areas which are hypomobile, so like they feel quite tight. And then there's other areas which feel quite loose. And, you know, I, I like the example that you use there of using positions that create what I would call a closed loop or a closed yeah. system. You know, like it, it's common with a lot of mobility methods that they they're more open system movements. So like, you know, like you're, you're sitting on the ground and you're, you're moving your hips through internal and external rotation, or you're, you're moving your, your arms and your shoulders. And while they are definitely useful in certain contexts, there is a, a leakage of force that's coming out. And so if we anchor different parts of the body, then we contain that force in the body, really useful for situations where you are hypermobile because it, it creates a closed loop of tension, which builds stability deeper into the tendons and the ligaments around the joints. And then like everything has much better integrity around yeah. the joint. Yeah. So it's a, it's a different way of looking at it um, rather than just taking a joint through range of movement and kind of almost like magnif like repeating that instability, like the nervous system needs to learn how to communicate with the body and to to create tension in different context and different movements. And as you mentioned, also for a hockey player or for daily life, it's about transitioning force. It's not about just moving the joint around. So we need to find the sweet spot for structural integrity that force is able to going through the body without getting disturbed. Yes. Block. Yeah. It's one thing that I, I learned when I was first exploring Tai Chi and it was quite humbling. One of my teachers was like a 60 year old guy and you, you look at him and he didn't look particularly strong or robust. But the thing that I wasn't able to see at the time was his level of like structural integrity. So like as he moved, his power was generated, you know, like through his feet, through his center, through his spine, through his hand as one unit. So when he hit you, like it didn't make sense. <laughs> you know, it was like yeah. it's, it was like being hit by a ton of bricks. And it, it took me a while to like really comprehend because I was twice the size of him. And I was like, oh, I'm really, you know, I had that kind of I'm strong guy. Like you, what can what can this guy do? <laughs> and, and then like, yeah. you know, knocked me around like a sack of potatoes. And I realized that like it, and this is, I, I really love the practice of, of Tai Chi or the principles underneath it is that every movement, it's not just the end position, but the, the way they transition together, that the body starts to become a more integrated structure where every movement is a whole body movement. And I like to think of that when we're looking at stretching of, even if we are in a deeper stance and all that sort of stuff, how is the body able to be interconnected and for force to move through it? So then we start to use the fascia system as it's designed of like this very um, tensile web that has integrity rather than just like flopping into the joints and putting excess pressure on the ligaments. Like let's use our suspension system. And for that, we need to kind of create expansion, create movement as we're doing these stretches. Yeah, which already brought up the next point of view with structural integrity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, so the fourth point, yeah, is is around, you know, the mind factors 
of yeah. this and the often in the cases of hypermobility you may notice that it's the body is a reflection of your mind in this case and so yeah would you like to you had a thought that you want to let yeah and and let me just look at this scenario of hypermobile hypermobility it's just like uh, to bring it into bruce lee's uh famous uh, wording like be like water water can flow and water can crush and then often those people are unconscious be more in the flow space or so where they just do their best to to go around challenges to not go into conflict to just be there and find their way without resistance mm. uh, but in case of living a fulfilled life it's more like really sometimes standing up and bring your thoughts, your intentions, emotions into one line, align them and just keep moving forward. Yes. And this, in a way, the reflective process of what we already were talking about with structural integrity can be yeah. just... A... Yeah, and, and I, I think there's there's some really powerful overflows. Like that's one of the things I love about working with the body is because of the parallels it has to how we can navigate life. If we allow our practice to to be that way, we really do yeah. bring it into the context of, of who we are. And so like, yeah, in situations when you do start to develop that sense of integrity of like, okay, here is a challenge. I'm not going to then let this external variable navigate me like I can I can face into it and work with it it's uncomfortable it's challenging and that may then be reflected of here I am in a in a relationship or a social situation and I feel my sense of like truth being pressed upon and then maybe I want to like adapt and and morph myself to please that person or change yeah. myself to 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 avoid that conflict in that environment and this moment of realization of like, actually, no, I can stand my ground here. This is important to me. And I've yeah. got me building evidence and reference materials for that in the body. It that starts to really develop a sense of real integrity with who you are and not becoming a jellyfish <laughs> in a way to life yeah. of the external influence because it can take the best of us at times. I think that that can be a really, really useful point to bring the mind factors to see that the body isn't doesn't ever lie to us. It just really reflects back to us these wonderful lessons. And it's not saying that you are broken because you're hypermobile and you need to change because it's more so going, okay, this is like, reflecting to me opportunities to realize my inherent strength you know and to connect with these qualities more deeply yeah and as you mentioned it's not about that being like water is wrong it's just often we got stuck in this specific thing thing and we are not able to use the counterpart yeah yeah and life is is about using all the things which are there yeah so it's yeah. not only flowing it's also crushing yeah. And, and coming into that harmony point, I think, you know, one useful principle with all of this is that each of us tend to have a, maybe a, a gravitation toward more yin or toward more yang in, in our essence. And, you know, one of the things in nature is that we see, and this is within us, is that there is no separating of that in, in real truth. <laughs> And often the problems and challenges happen is when those things do get separated, when it's like, I am this, you know, Yes. but then we don't realize that we're also that, you know, so everything has a counterbalance. And so in this case of hypermobility and like improving your flexibility, maybe you do lean toward this yin and it's starting to discover the yang qualities within yourself you know, which which is, you know, back to that water analogy that you used of like the, the water is powerful and but water also requires structure. Otherwise it pours everywhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So and that's kind of, you know, the essence of what we're talking about here. Yeah. So so to sum up, uh, if you are experiencing hypermobility and if you would like to improve your the way that you move through life, 
uh, your sense of flexibility in motion, consider these four things. So focus on stability, create tension in your end range, focus on movement transitions rather than positions, and then start to look at those more integrity, qualities of integrity and strength within you and bringing them into your practice, bringing them into your life. And it may be a challenging path, but on the other side, it, there is a real deep, uh, liberating, uh, freeing experience that can come from being able to dance between these poles of yin and yang within yourself. And so that would be some considerations. I hope you find that useful. Let us know in the comments what you think about it and how you're experiencing your body in the case of hypermobility. And we'd love to hear from you. So I think, yeah, a useful next step is, you know, within the physical freedom challenge, we do start to look at this of establishing, you know, a base level of connection with your body, you know, discovering where your end ranges are, particularly stillness practices of being able to be in these challenging positions and maintain integrity to really like stand in yourself powerfully and yeah i think that that's that's a, there's some really useful practices in there uh, if you'd like to explore further yeah ciao, ciao.